So in the second tutorial, we're going to go now into some programming and it's important to note what version of Python you will have in your system installed. Current version is 3.7, although the code we're writing is in version 2. So you need to make sure that you've got version 2 running in there. And my IP address is 44 here. Uh, so if you go, I'm running Windows. So in Windows, I'm running and the, the Python 27 version, although I've got Python 3 installed as the standard. So that's a little bit complicated sometimes, but if you, if I go here, even to Python 27 and I type PY, that's the command prompt, you can see that it's coming up with Python version 3.7. Now the code that we are writing will not work in Python 3.7. So make sure when you're in the Python 27, you go to the right directory. And if you would type Python in here, then you would get the right version that we want to run. Okay, so very important. Uh, otherwise, it will not run properly. Uh, Python running, obviously text editor or anything like that is fine and just saving a text editor as PY, although there's some better editors around, for example, like uh, this one here, which is, uh, I use this often. That's the idle, I-D-L-E, but it's really up to you which version you're going to be using. Uh, we'll be running just a text editor here, so that's fine. Now, as you know, as you remember, we talked about the uh, control device sending an HTTP request over port 80. So forget about the GUI, for example. This is another client now. So I want to connect to the UI. So I need to set up a socket. Um, and you could do that in a Raspberry Pi or on a PC or Mac or any Linux box as well. Um, I'm collect, connecting to port 80 on this IP address. I'm telling the system if there's an error to exit. This line here is very important because what this line does is it is getting the raw data. This is the basic negotiation that I'm telling the UI mixer itself that I want to connect to it and how, I'm, how I am negotiating with it. Uh, the commands are all separated by new line 0a, we'll, or is it the slash n in C++? So slash n or the uh, 0a if you're doing any hex data. And then, then I'm receiving some, some data here. So I'm getting 1,024 bytes uh, up to, I'm just you know, leaving some room here to receive them. I normally only take about 128 at a time. Um, I've got some variables here, and then I'm listening, sending the alive command. And that's very, very important um, because the, the server doesn't receive alive normally. Every five to six seconds, then it'll stop sending updates to this, uh, to this socket. So that's important to keep sending that every so often. I'm grabbing data here. I'm splitting the data with the slash where it finds a slash n, a new line command. And then I'm looking for this line, this data in the line, okay? If I find this data, which is a level for a mixer, as you remember, if you go into the uh, previous tutorial, you could see what the values of the uh, data that are being sent. Uh, so if that's the line, okay, I replace, I grab the number and the fader and the number there so I can look for it inside the system and convert it to a percentage uh, because we don't want those long integer values between zero and one that the mixer was sending. We want a percentage, for example, to show. I'm also doing the same. I'm looking for this inside the lines, which is a mute on, mute off. Uh, okay, it's so mute on and mute off and I'm displaying them. Um, now, this code will be available. You'll be able to download it as far as that's concerned. And you'll be able to then write anything here and look for any kind of data within the data set that we saw uh, in the previous tutorial that you can create, whether you want to see if a player is playing, uh, which mix number is playing, or show any mute. So look for any mute and just show that mute. And then you'll be able to send that back to the UI at the same time from that point of view. 
there is nothing really complex here as far as that's concerned. Um, it, the most important part probably is this beginning part uh, right there, sending that command here to enable the connection to be correct. Okay, so we want, if we want to run this, I've saved this as a um, pi. Change that to py, so I've saved that there already. Okay, the Python file, test1.python, and then I'll be able to run it. So if we go, and I'll grab this here sideways so we can see what's happening here, okay? Um, let's see, cool. Yeah, that's, that'll be fine. So if I go and I type Python here, remember I'm not gonna type py or just the Python name because I want to make sure that um, that it's running and my um, test one PI is in this directory here okay and I'll hit enter so started and it says I'm muted as you can see the mute is on here so I'm muted now what we're gonna do is now go on my screen here and just change the uh, resolution so you'll be able to see everything together at the same time and that'll be much better for you come on baby there we are okay there we are cool okay now you'll be able to see the screens at the same time and what's happening and you'll be able to be happy from that point of view okie dokie cool now so if i move the fader here as you can see, I'm getting the percentages up to 100 from zero, okay? If I unmute it, then I'll start getting unmute buttons going over crazy, you know, as far as the code is concerned. <laughs> and that was just a quick Python script, really, to show you what's available. I would put some more work into it as far as <coughs> clearing the mute and unmuted when it's printing, when it's not printing, but giving you an overview how simple it would be to communicate and to see the data that is being sent. And again, if I wanted to send the data, that could be the next part that we do in the next tutorial.